Hey everybody, uh, today I'm at the university labs where we do all our programming uh, exercises. There's a nice skylight here, so I thought I'd uh, do the video here. Um, you might be wondering, because I'm doing a computer science course, how I'm doing my programming exercises, because you do need a computer for that kind of stuff. Uh, so I thought I'd show you today, but before that, I'd like to um, update you on what we did in Hack Lab yesterday. We've got this, uh, the battery, and you'll notice that the connector is different. Uh, that's because the previous one was, um, it wasn't great, it was pretty loose. Um, and because it kind of moves around in my bags as I'm cycling, it kind of, um, kind of comes off. Um, which isn't great because you, um, you cycle down a hill and you're going really fast and you think, yeah, I'm generating lo loads of energy. And then you, you get home, you open your bag, and you just feel like a real fruitcake because the, uh, the connection's loose and you haven't, you haven't charged it at all. Um, but um, we tested it and it is, it is working because I've been um, cycling with this for, I think, two days. Um, and we worried because when you press the button, I don't know if you can see it, but the, uh, there's one LED that's flashing blue. Um, and that means it's at its lowest, it's basically flat, it's out of energy. Um, and I was worried because I was cycling and it wasn't changing, it didn't seem to be charging. But then I realized, um, we realized that the... Uh, when it's charging, it's going directly to the battery. It's bypassing all of this circuitry here, uh, where the LEDs detect how much is going in and stuff. So the LEDs are actually quite un unreliable, so um, you can't really trust them. Although you can reset it by um, sort of charging it by plugging something into here. Um, so we actually tested it today, and I got half of the phone charge out of that. So I'm actually really happy. So it does seem to be working. Um, because until now, I've been relying on stored energy. I had this massive battery bank, and it stores about 40 phone charges. And um, it says it's portable, but it's not really. It's just so heavy. Uh, I think it means portable in the sense that you, you put it in the boot of the car on a camping holiday, uh, and you never have to carry it around, because lugging it around is just not really an option. It's just way too heavy. So what I did get is um, this. I'm going to be returning the other one. Um, and this is great. It's light. It's, um, it's smaller. Um, it's just way more portable. Um, and we're going to um, try and charge this from the bike instead of this, because this one only has one cell on the inside, one kind of battery, whereas this has six stacked on top of each other. So you can push way more current into this without damaging it. So that means if we don't have any current restrictions, we can get way more power um, out of the same bike ride. So hopefully I'd like to move on to this. Um, we've slightly invalidated the warranty. Yeah, we uh, made a little modification to it. Um, but these connectors are really great because um, once you put them in, they don't come out. They're really secure. They're really, um, they're just really great connectors. Um, but yeah, um, once we get this working with the bike, uh, we'll be able to, s hopefully we'll be, we're not sure um, how this works, but maybe the LEDs will work. Um, and one of my goals with this project is to be able to charge this fully with a bike. And when that happens, I want to be able to power my Nintendo Wii playing Just Dance, um, just off of this. Because um, I looked at the specs and Nintendo Wii uses about 18 watts of power. Uh, which is amazing. Uh, and although I won't be able to use a proper TV because uh, the TV I've got at home uses 190 watts. So that's about 190 joules of energy every second. Um, but I found this little monitor. It's got all the connections you'd ever need. Well, I don't need. And um, it only uses, according to the specs, it only uses about 12 watts of energy. And we measured it, and it actually uses less than 10. Less than 10 watts for a TV. So you can actually... Um, we've, um, you're able to actually plug it into this, because this has an AC outlet. Right, so you plug in this little adapter. And then you um, use it like a socket, like um, you plug stuff into it like you'd plug stuff into the wall, up to about 100 watts. Um, and it's amazing because we, uh, we would plug the TV into this. Uh, and then you could just power TV, although that's quite wasteful because what you're doing is you have DC power stored in here, direct current. That's converted into AC, alternating current, here, so that you can power stuff on the wall. Um, then this converts it back into DC so that it can be 
used as inputs of the DC in. So that's really wasteful, because you're converting to AC, which wastes energy, then back into DC, which wastes energy again, whereas now I've got, oh, where is it? Here it is. I've got a cable that lets you plug it um, into a USB um, socket. And that's amazing. You can power a TV off of a USB socket. Um, and it converts the 5 watts into 12 watts, uh, 12 volts, which you can then plug into the DC input. So that's just DC all the way. So that um, wastes a lot less energy. Um, and then, like, yeah, it's just a really neat little monitor. I'll put um, links in the blog to um, all this stuff just in case you're interested. Um, but yeah, now I think I'm going to move on to the programming exercises. Um, and I've been using a computer called a Raspberry Pi. And um, this is a credit card sized computer. I'll just let you take that in. Um, you might be wondering, well, how do you use it? How do you type with it? How do you use a mouse with it? And uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll set that up. I hope you can see that. Yeah. So, to use a keyboard and mouse, you just plug it in. So I've got this keyboard and mouse combo. It's got a little trackpad. And you, this one's got a little receiver inside, so you just, that's the USB. You just plug it in. Uh, yeah. This is a Wi-Fi dongle. So you plug in that, and then now you can use Wi-Fi. Uh, and the display, this, this outputs HDMI, so you just plug in a HDMI cable, and you can connect it to a normal, normal TV if you want, it doesn't have to be this kind of thing. But, basically it just works. Um, and basically, um, this is amazing because it stores all your files, all the operating system, pictures, documents, on that SD card, can you see that? Yep. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful what you can, what technology has come to because you can do pretty much anything you do on a normal computer on that. Maybe a little bit slower, but you can um, browse the web, you can uh, write file, uh, write documents, edit pictures, play games. <laughs> you can actually get Minecraft or Raspberry Pi. Um, just set that up. Uh, power to the monitor. And um, this is actually an old version. The latest version um, is even smaller than this, and it costs four pounds. That's 4.00, not 400, not 40. Four pounds for a computer. Uh, and I just found that incredible. Uh, it's called the Raspberry Pi Zero. I really recommend you look it up. Um, and just the um, Raspberry Pi product in general, because it's, it's really great. Um, and the whole idea behind it is to make computing accessible um, to kids, to um, just people who want to learn how to program, how to um, mess around with electronics, because it does have, um, oh, it's kind of, um, it does have little pins, I don't know if you can see them, but you can connect wires and stuff to them. Oh, there we go. I hope you can see the monitor. Yeah. Um, sorry if the brightness isn't good. Um, yes, I really recommend you um, look up the Raspberry Pi project. Just find out more information about it. See what people are saying about it. Um, a similar project is the Arduino, which is a tiny, even smaller than this, it's tiny and you um, use, um, it's more hardware focused, whereas this is more software focused. This is like learning to program and stuff, whereas Arduino is more like lights and motors and electronic stuff, although both of them have aspects of both hardware and software. And the desktop should be coming up now. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, go on the internet and show you some browsing, although that's quite slow. Um, the rest of it is quite fast, like doing text and stuff, that's, you don't need much power for that. Um, there's the mouse. Um, so yeah, here we go. That is the desktop. I'm just going to go to the web browser. Oh, 
sih. <laughs> so I've been doing my um, programming exercises at the terminal, and um, they use a thing called SSH, where you um, it's called it stands for Secure Shell, where you um, log into a remote computer. Uh, this is the terminal. Yeah, and then you can just do your um, my programming exercises from the command line. Uh, so I don't actually need the um, desktop interface. I can just use the command line. But there you go. There's the internet working. Um, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. I'll put links to everything in the blog. Hope you enjoyed. I'll get back to you in a few days. See how this stuff is charging. See you.